What's going on, everybody? We're here with a young, up and coming producer, Azriel. How's it going, bro? What's up, bro? Order up. How's everything been going for you, bro? It's been straight. Just came back from a weekend in Miami, uh, for Art Basil with the gang. We went to Art Basil. We went to go support, um, it was in a ski night, but for three to eight and shit. Yeah. So we were out there vibing, seeing their pop up shop. Had a studio session with the artists out there. And yeah, that's how it went. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. And if sure. you guys don't know, please go check out that shop. He's like on, uh, in Orlando. Oh, like, yeah, by, uh, downtown, by, uh, near downtown. I know it's a plaza. It's orange or some shit. Near the uh, police station for sure. Academy. Yeah, yeah. So please go check it out. Go show love. Super talented artist, the owner, and all that stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, man. So how was Art Basel, bro? Is there any networking, man? People out there? Uh, yeah, we were chilling. Um, you know, speak to way and stuff. So Danny was out there in ski masks. Uh, so we were out there chilling, you know, with them, vibing. Uh, other artists, though, we met a few, like, you know, underground. Some artists from Orlando were out there, too. And at their venue, they had, like, a little, like, a little small intimate show where they were able to, like, you know, rap and perform. So I locked in with a few. Um, overall, networking was pretty dope. Even at the studio. Even though we went to House of Hits, um, the engineer there was mad dope. Real cool. Um, that's mainly it. After that day, we just went out, went to some clubs, and just showed. But overall, it was great though. Really good time. Good vacation too. You feel me? We've been working all year and shit, so we needed time off real quick. That's we still made it. So, so <clears throat> I saw that uh, you posted on your story. Uh, you was at a studio, bro, where it had like the fish tank. Oh yeah. Like, yo, what was that, bro? That was like, that. That was House of Hits. Um, that was in the master studio, the presidential. It's a presidential. But yeah, we built a nice little flower session. We're just cooking up for a bit. And then my artist, Jay Bro, went in and he recorded a song. And that's where we got there with the engineer, but that's my go-to studio when I'm out there. Um, it's always quick, professional, and they're very, very talented. The engineers there are all really, really cool people and dope. So and you go to the house to make a hit, so it's only right. That's, that's dope. What that's dope. That's type of people record there, you know? Like, uh, a lot of artists have been there. Kodak, uh, Rod Wave, it's in Miami. It's, I would say it's definitely one of the top five studios. And right next to it is the Royal Nile Studio too. Um, last year when I went for the first time, me and Dan linked up and made a song. Uh, we didn't finish the first song in the first studio. We were there for a few hours that we just didn't finish the song. And he was like, yo, just push up on me at the studio. And then we finished it there. We got like, two songs in there. Right? But I didn't know yeah. it was enough at the studio. It's crazy. Yeah, they do. I don't know if they book it out to anybody, but like, yeah. I feel like it's for their artists. Cause you mm -hmm. know, they have artists signed to them as well. So I feel like that's like their studio, okay. which is why he invited me over. You feel me? Like, we were there for like, it's like four or five in the morning that day. Just vibing, making music and shit. And when you speak about Danny, you're speaking about Danny Tower, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so if you guys don't know him, he's from uh, from he's from Orlando, correct? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, yeah. and then I'm, I think he stays in Miami. I don't know, he'd be everywhere, but. Yeah, yeah. How was that experience working with, uh, with an artist of that caliber? He was definitely one of like, my first major ones. I was like last year. Um, it was really cool, because he showed my love, to be honest. Obviously, first time meeting him, I was kind of nervous, you feel me? Um, when you're playing your beats, and I'm going to the first few ones, and then, um, you know, then I hear like, yo, go next, go next, and shit. But then he found he found one that he liked on some melodic vibes, and then he found another one that he liked with like his original sound, which is why he gave me two that day. But um, ever since then, it's just, you know, here and then, like, yo, trying to do something. I send him beats all the time as well. He replies, he sends shit. But nah, he's been really cool to work with. Um, and it was really cool because when I was in that session as well, like, you know, this major artist, um, he was really like interacting with me. Like he drop a verse or a few and he'd be like, yo, come check it out. Like you fuck with it? Nah. Obviously I fuck with it. Anyway, but yeah, that's, it was really cool. He showed me how it really gets to like vibe with, uh, artists at that caliber. That's fine, man. I know like first time we had pretty big artists that we was filming for, <clears throat> you know, you almost get them like them butterflies. Cause you're like, man, like, what if you don't like it? Like. Yeah, you know. I had a whole folder for bro. And I was just like, damn, like, I had a whole folder leading up to that weekend, right? Um, and then when I just got there, I'm in the, I'm in the like the hotel, just playing through. I'm like, yo, these are not it. Like, I don't know, like, it just didn't hit me. So then I just stayed up the whole night making more beats. Put us to the session as well, cooked up a little bit more before he even got there. So by the time he got there, I had like at least two whole folders for him. But that's, that's, that's some regular shit, just cook up and have sounds. But it's more like just having that sound that the artist is used to. And some that might take him out of his comfort zone a little bit to bring him to me too, because he might drop that song and he'll be like, yo, low key, people really felt that. I gotta go back and make more with you type shit. So that's what I look forward to whenever I work with other artists as well. 
type shit. Yeah. And sometimes it's good for artists to sell like brand channel stuff like that or just try different things like that. Yeah, for sure. They can't say, I mean, they can't for sure. They're not saying that. But it's good for them to experiment and try different sounds out. Yeah. Different lanes and different vibes. You never know. You know, that, that, that's crazy, bro. I mean, like, you know, the fact that you got to work with Danny, uh, like Danny Towers and stuff like that. Uh, you know, that's for anybody that's, that's watching this and uh, you're a fan of. of um, uh, uh, that's real, sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm a little nervous about it. I don't know why. She just stole in front of me, man. So, that's what I'm about. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm nah, a little bit nervous. Uh, we tell them though, yeah. yeah um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, like, there's levels to this shit, man. It's crazy. Like, the fact that you got to, like, especially that you're young, bro. You're like 23. 23. That's, yeah. that's pretty young, bro. Yeah, my, um, I only started producing like two years ago, so I'm still very young in the game. I don't even think anything crazy yet. Like, I know a lot of producers um, that I look up to, you feel me? Like, Metro. Weezy, Turbo, uh, Taurus, I keep naming you, feel me? But um, Ayo hey, from Orlando. And a lot of people always say this, but you gotta put your 10,000 hours in, hence like your first 10 years in the game. A lot of people I work with, they've been in the game for 10 years in their own like brand, you know, with clothing and makeup and you know, all that stuff. So like they've had their 10 years in, and now they have those successful businesses going for themselves. So like, I haven't learned, like, I'm not gonna really blow up tomorrow or like next year it's not my expectation ever like i always set a nice little yearly goal like this year was to get that local support and love and i acquired that so it's just like i just take the little small steps and once i get to my 10th year and it happened before obviously you know never know like overnight sensations happen all the time now with TikTok and all that social media shit but yeah i feel like i don't really expect myself to get so crazy like i'm some super producer shit until like 10 years into the game you know you gotta respect the game yeah. Yeah, I learned a lot. There's a lot to learn in this shit. I'm st- I learn every day. Every yeah. single day, I link somebody, a producer, artist, A&R, manager, and they just put me on some more shit I didn't know. And I don't just label myself as like, you know, into that producer and I try and do it all. So it's just like, it's cool to pick up a game from every single person in the music industry. Cause I could apply it right back to my team and just be like, yo, this is the way we gotta do it. So uh, in other words, you know, it's it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Definitely, but everyone mm-hmm. thinks it's a sprint. Everyone, everyone wants that like get rich quick method, you know, like, the handouts and stuff it's like nah i'm on the opposite i'm just trying to you know learn the game from everybody because you could learn a lot from people in different fields too because at the end of the day they are entrepreneurs that are doing this shit on their own in the sweet and sour episode um and if you guys haven't watched that uh, please go and, and watch it yeah probably be linked down below for sure um there was some uh one of the reasons we wanted to bring you on the podcast because there was a lot of like gems that we was talking about like off the show like off camera yeah and I was just like, but we gotta bring him on. Cause like, you know, um, even though you've been two years in the game, I mean, like uh, you just said it right now, you're pretty much still a student of the game. Yeah. yeah and so sure. like, uh, one of the things that we try to do here is kind of like inspire whoever's watching or, you know, um, one of the things I wish I had coming up in the film industry was, uh, you know, tips and tricks and stuff like that on how to maneuver around the industry and kind of, you know, and, and grow as, a, as an individual and as a person. Um, and uh, yeah, and like, how do you stay humble enough to to uh, to continue to become like to continue be, being a student of the game? Um, great question, by the way. Um, but to be honest, I just see it as like, for one, I just been humble my whole life because the way my mom raised me, for one, and I've been had an ego death like four or five years ago type shit, you know. But in general speaking, like, I feel like everyone that I meet, but as around me, is beneficial. For one, you can't ever be, like we talked about that one time, you can't be the smartest one in the room. If you are, respectfully cool, but you're in the wrong room. Like, you're comfortable in there because you're the smartest one. I want to be uncomfortable. I want to be like, damn, like, this guy, he's up here, or this girl, he's out here doing this. Like, how are you doing that? Like, what is it? You feel me? Like, every day I just wake up, like, all right, what can, what can I do today? You feel me? And if I got people like that with me, I just hungry. And they go around and doing the same thing as well. And they come back, like I said earlier, and we all just feature that same knowledge. Like, bro, we're all students, but we're trying to master the game. You feel me? So it's just like, you gotta keep going. But um, what I'm trying to get at is, well, actually, low key, I just lost my chain of thought. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I don't know where I was going with that. But <laughs> point is, um, you know, it's just team effort. Oh, no, I remember. Team point is, it's just like, um, so that's why I remain humble because if I was to be closed off and like cocky, like, nah, it has to be my way, they might not fuck with that. And at the same time, I don't personally fuck with someone like that too. I like to be with people that, you know, are teaching me or they're also aligning themselves to be taught something. 
Because when I first started, and I started going to the rooms with these producers, the first thing they would do is be like, yo, I got you, you do like this. So off face, they were already teaching me how to do shit. And I always showed up to the producers. Shout out to Chad G, shout out to Spivey, you know, shout out to uh, Scarlett. Those are all people that I worked in the beginning that helped me get up there. And especially my boy, Zach, you feel me? Those two, uh, Trap Geek and my boy, Zach, those two boys have literally got me in a way to where I'm at today, you feel me? Networking is key, bro. You know? Yeah, especially networking, like, especially um, out house, you know, cause a lot of in-house shit happens over social media and stuff, but when you're out, I met a lot of people when I'm out, night out drinking, you feel me? I'm more social and I just be in line sometimes the next thing you know, get to talking and you know, I'll overhear something about music and they're like, oh, you're an artist? Oh yeah, I'm on it. Boom, we lock in. And a week from now too, we're in a studio working. It's just like, it's just the, the vibe to me, for real. That's all I care about, for real. And then, you know, I give them a beat or whatever. We work together, make a song. They play for their boys or their camp and they're just like, yo, we'll give you that beat. And that's how I had opportunities as well from those, from those little small five, 10 minute conversations. Yeah. A week from now, two months, whatever, a year. It has came back and like, yo, by the way, I made a song to this and so and so wants to be. I'm just like, oh, that we just lock in type shit. You know, before we move on to the conversation and stuff, uh, I would like to ask you, like, you know, you, you've been in the, in the game for two years and still humble, still learning. But what what inspired you to do this? When did it start? Like, how how was that? Like, you know, because uh, a lot of people want to make music and stuff, but they don't want to take the time to learn. Um, all, the, all the stuff that come with it, and uh, why did you decide that? Why? What, what, what? Like, start from the beginning. Like, how did you, uh, like, coming up? Did you always want to make music? Like, I got you. Great questions. I know, Kat. Yeah, always got good questions. But um, to be honest, music's always been a great part of my life. I'm pretty sure everyone you feel me since like middle school. You feel me? You going to school with the one for threes and shit like iPods, you know, the whole ones, yeah. all them little Flash. nanos, yeah, you feel me? <laughs> the, okay, that's, anyway, but, so, you feel me, I've always loved music, I get mad, distracted, whatever, like, I'm knowing, I'm just putting music on, distracting myself, just vibing, so, it didn't really, like, I never really thought about making music, although I was a part of band in middle school and high school a little bit, like, like for a year in high school, but definitely middle school, I was a part of the band, and I always wanted to be on drums, but I didn't make it in time for like 5 a.m. tryouts at the time. My mom wasn't waking up that early, you know? So it's just like, I missed the opportunity, but I still wanted to be in band in general. I wanted to do the flute. I didn't really like fuck with it. I ended up doing the clarinet. So I was done playing with the band, it's cool, whatever, boom, boom. Step away from that, but that's where I learned a little bit of music and you know how music is like, you know, played out in the notes and a little bit of music theory is what I'm trying to get at. And then it wasn't until obviously like, 2019, 2020, when I moved back over here. And I was with my artist, Jay Bro, we were just smoking. And, um, you know, he wanted to get into music too. I also wanted to be a rapper. So he's just like, yo, low key. We're watching a music video as we're smoking while talking about this too. And it's gonna, um, nasty on camera. It's playing. And it's like them in a villa, I think in Jamaica or whatever. But it's him, uh, his producer, Taurus, just making the beat and vibing. Like, you can obviously still look at the video on YouTube. But you know, it's just that video. So we're seeing the vibe and it's like, he's like, bro, like you could be our producer and I could be like, cause we always do everything as a duo. We've been COD duos, like we used to be a pro team, like everything we've done, like it's just as a duo. So I was like, fuck it, like why not? Like I'll see what it's about. I had no idea what the fuck I was gonna do. So I get home, I've always had a Mac. So I'm just like, I'm going garage band. It wasn't it. Hit up my homeboy who was already low key a producer. His name is um, Casey. And he ended up giving me the track version of Logic. I go on YouTube, I'm like, trap beat tutorial and i started seeing fl studio everywhere i see no logic i, I even put in with logic barely in the video so i was like damn i gotta get fl so i get fl and ever since then like that's where i started doing tutorials i think of other producers i'm doing my shit they're teaching me shit for my first year none of my 808s were in key none of them were in key like and you could tell now like now it's cringe when you hear the old beats and they're not in key so i low-key scratched my first year of beats just threw them away i didn't really fuck with them anymore and like last year, like leading up to this moment, like this time last year, um, I mean, I work from, I don't have a main studio, but I mainly work with uh, Vivid. And the engineer Y there, he taught me more of like music theory and depth and like learning how to push any key. Even though it's more of an ear thing, you can definitely hear, but it's also nice to learn like literally what's all that stuff. So after all that I learned, and then I've been here 
but that's basically it. That's like the reason I started with my homeboy and um, he asked me to start producing. And ever since then, like I also seen a love for social media, like all my people, you feel me? Like, at first I really thought I was gonna be treated like a SoundCloud rapper. Like no disrespect, you feel me? But mm -hmm. like, oh, this guy's just making beats. Like it's another, another local rapper just trying to like, make bread off music. But like, I, I do get massive support and love. And so is my team, even the people that are artists and up and coming, like we do get love that's not expected. And that was the goal this year, to try and acquire that. Cause now we're gonna try and start expanding into like other cities and, and shit like that. But that's how shit got like that. Yeah, I, I feel like, you know, when you said that, <clears throat> that you want to be treated like a SoundCloud rapper, I feel like that's a lot of people's fear when they uh, try to join this space of, of music um, or even film, like, you know, uh, uh, me and Christian have a podcast where we, we talk about the difference between a, a videographer and a cinematographer. You know, there's, there's, there's levels to it and, you know, like there's, there's differences in our, and I feel you, I feel like that stops a lot of people from like reaching out and stuff like that because they just scared of what other people's opinions are. And uh, I feel like, you know, if that's your main worry, you're in the wrong space. You know, uh, for sure. You know, one of one of my one of my drawbacks, at least in the beginning of my career, was uh, I was too worried about being a. I was a perfectionist, so if it wasn't good, I didn't want to put it out. But that kind of hold me back several, you know, years in reality because like. I wanted my, you know, you listen to like, to put it in in your world is like you listen to all these great artists. And you listen to, you know, to 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 the futures, to the Kanye's, to the, you know, the J Cole, whoever's your favorite artist, and you see how perfect their music is. Yeah. Okay. And you want to match that to the best you can, but you know. Yeah. Um, I think it's important that everybody has to start off somewhere, um, and and you just work your way up. Um, who who are some of those people that that you got inspired? And you pull from and, and, and you know, because I see a lot of these, uh, I see a lot of these TikToks where it'll be like, uh, they're like, they're like, they're producers that make like, uh, like lo-fi, lo-fi. Lo-fi, yeah. And, and they be talking about how like they listen to nothing but like trap and shit. They, this is what they make, you know? Like, I feel that, I feel like, uh, okay, so I feel that in a way because like, it really depends on the mood. Like I do make trap shit, but if I hear a nice Drake type beat, I'm kind of sad that day or some shit like that's what I'm kind of feed into. So I really go off making my type beats of like where I'm at. And a lot of artists will hit me up like, yo, low key, like this this beat pack is on, on some like you know feeling like you know like yeah this month low key I was just like eh, stuck off like feeling like that. But for my inspiration though, it's like I mentioned earlier, uh Weezy, basically why I sell producers I know to be real, Weezy of uh, Taurus Turbo. Well not by Turbo, not for his whole name. And obviously Metro London on the track, like those Atlanta sound for me is what like gets me going. Like that's the vibe I wanna be at. I wanna move out to Atlanta, I wanna be working with those type of artists. It's just the motion out there is great. And it's just everyone's, you know, everyone blows up out there because they help each other and they feed each other. So it's just like that's the scene you really gotta be at. I mean, we know you was in Miami. Um when you was cooking things up there and stuff like that. Um, how, how was that that process? So is this for your next upcoming project? Um, them sessions, low key, was for my artists in a way. Uh, yeah, we got a nice song that we made. We got two. One's an open verse that we're trying to get one of the artists out here, and then I believe that's probably for his next tape we're talking about. Um, but mainly the other beats we made were kind of like just a translator type beat, like all three of us making a beat together. So those are all things that we're gonna like be type of sounds we're gonna use as display for the tape. But um I've been thinking of the structuring of the, of the tape because I don't know, um I haven't really, at least recently, really seen like a team producer, you know, like a, a team of producers really drop a tape like that. So I'm thinking of a really cool creative way of making that tape happen. And like instead of being your regular like 10 to 12 song and we all make that beat, I'm thinking of a really cool way to try and like make it known that okay it's a team tape the structure is gonna be really dope that's what i'm trying to figure out i can't say you know too much but yeah so most of those sounds that we were making there i definitely want to use for the, the tape and it's also about like looking for who's going to be on the, on the tape now so you mentioned uh the new uh, trendsetters tape uh if it's going to be like a collage of uh, different artists that are signed under the brand uh to uh to come and make music together it's going to be like kind of like almost like uh 
for an example, not exactly this, but for example, kind of like how the Metro Boomer new album is like, In or a like way. DJ Cali. Yeah, or... not for sure, definitely like that. Yeah. Um, the artists are definitely gonna be on tape. They have to be. And then it's just a matter of like, you know, it's just a tape of us. When we cook up, I can't speak from other two, but at least when I cook up, I hear already the artists on the beat, you feel me? So it's like, I'll make that beat and then I'll bounce it out and I'll hear the artists, you know? Like my homeboy Travis, for example, I'll make beats for him. I'll hear a sound, cook it up, and I'll send it to him. I'll be like, yo, here's the beat. And I'll also be like, yo, here's what I think. Let me know if you like this idea. With this sample, for example, or with this type of intro, this vibe. If you don't like it, though, let me know. I'll remake it. And, you know, just for any other artist out here, that's how I really am hands on. I just send them the sound. And I hear, if I hear them on them as well, it's like, all right, this is low key ready your beat. Like, I wouldn't put some of the beat pack unless you don't say nothing. Then I'll put it on the beat pack type shit. But, other than that, that's how I really be cooking up. So when we make them, I already have the first few like artists I could hear on the tape already with what the sounds we have. But I already know it. the more we start structuring it with the idea I have, it might switch up. So again, it doesn't matter of being there, to be honest. Like if I'm making a beat and as we're making a tape, like feel me just my like, okay, we got someone so here, scratch them off. But it's also like putting two people together, two, three people together that we wouldn't normally hear together. You know, as a producer, we hear certain shit. So it's just like, I want to put a sound together that you wouldn't normally expect. So I can have an artist that, you know, makes a different type of vibe, but he probably just drops a hook. And then an artist that anyone would expect to be on a tape. Just shit like that, you know, just, just making music, bro. So making the best of it. And that's how we kind of want to do the tape. Just get like a handful of artists and they can make their solos, features, whatever. But we're the ones that kind of come up with that vibe. And that, sort of like direction because they trust us enough to like be like yo try this out and say it like this and do like this like just follow our lead like we got you we're not gonna put out shitty music you know so that's the the hope of where i want to go with the tape so yeah so like i mean you got this project coming out um and you're just working with a variety of plethora of uh, artists and stuff like that um, you have any pet peeves of making this project any pet peeves of being in the studio yeah um not low key to be honest that's crazy that sounds. I'm a really chill, humble guy. So nothing really annoys me. I guess the only thing that would annoy me was if I'm paying for that set. Obviously I pay for sessions, you feel me? I'm mixing and mastering all that shit. So I guess if you're not taking it serious, cause I'm putting my time and money into this. So if I'm telling you, yo, push up on a studio where I just need you to literally lay down your vocals, then that would annoy me. But every artist I work with, I'm not, I'm not picking up an artist that just started rapping two, three weeks ago, whatever. Like I picked, I can't pick the artists into this day because I see them working individually in their own with their own projects and their own singles and their own craft in general and just because they're not displayed on social media every day i personally know them so it's like i know they're working you feel me and that's the way i'm going through it so not much really pet peeves i haven't gotten one because everyone i lock in with is they're locked in themselves so we get together we work and we create you know you spend a lot of time in the studio yeah, uh, a lot of money too. Them kids, yeah. <laughs> kids are expensive, bro. Uh, how how much is the average? Like, uh, I, I would don't say make music. No, so, you're good. Yeah. I would say low key a good average. Like, quality, bro. Quality matters. So if you're paying, really, well, it don't matter where you create music. So I can't even say that. A lot of hits have been made in the closet, for real. So so let's pick game right now. For whoever's watching this, I mean, you've been in the game for a bit now. Is there an average that you should be paying? Mm, nah, that's why like I didn't even answer it. Like, cause like to be honest, like it's just, you can pay a hundred for a studio, or you can pay fifty. To be honest, it just matters on the engineer and again the quality of the work. You you get what you pay for, you know. But then again, it just falls into it could be an upcoming engineer is only charging twenty dollars per hour, and it could be you know an engineer has been for ten for ten years already. He's on fifty an hour, two hundred. You feel me? So it just really matters on where you go. I don't think a studio is a necessity to make music, but I do think it's needed for you to be in that work environment. If you're making music all the time in your room, personally for me, because my bed's right here and then my studio's right here. So I literally got a bed, hop in a chair and I'm, I'm right there. So it's like, I'm still in my home environment, in my PJs, whatever. I don't feel the work ethic, but when I'm in the studio, I barely even talk. And my homeboy Jay was talking about that because we're doing vlogs now, right? And he's like, I need more attention. I need more energy from you. Like, he's like, it's cool, but y'all will lock in the, cause you know, we're producers. So we can just talk literally through our minds. Like we're just nodding like that. And we're just do that, do this. 
He's like, yo, I got 10, 15 minutes. I got just nodding your head, not talking, but y'all communicating. He's like, I need y'all to talk. But it just goes to show like that. You feel me? Like, that's just the way I go with it. Yeah. I know uh, in the film industry, uh, at least for me and Christian, we work in it's something similar. We, we also have our own lingo where we talk about. We use different words. And people look at us like, what are you talking about? Like, like, like don't even exactly. worry about it. Is it the same thing in the music industry? Is it the same thing? Like, yeah, like, you catch that vibe. Like, that's why they on my team. Because I don't got to speak to them. I know they're going to they gonna play their role and, and excel at what they do. So it's like, I could just literally, like, do the first 50% of the drums and get up. And my homeboy, Dre, is going to get on and execute the 808s the same way I would do it, if not better. You feel me? And then it's a matter of me just going back and tweaking it, if I have to. And same thing with Ty, because Ty's the one I usually makes our melodies. Like, we're in perfect harmony. He makes the melodies, and me and Dre go 50 50 on, on the drums, or vice versa. We can all hop on the melody too, but he's our main melody guy. He goes crazy on drums too, so like, it don't matter. We have three different heads on. He could be making a melody for us, and we're, me and Dre are both on his shoulder like this, just talking to him, like, yo, add this, yo, add that. We hear this, we hear that. Like, it just works out. It's never really a no. It's more of like, let me see. And if you don't really get it, you got two other people out there trying to teach you, like, go up higher, go up lower. We all help each other find the sound, is what I'm trying to say for real. Like, we all go together in one. No one no one oversteps and no one understeps themselves or the team. Because if you understand, if one of us slips up, we all fall. So like, I need them to be on, on point. If not, then I'm gonna fall. Has there ever been a time where you've been working with artists and you don't gotta mention any names? Not yeah, for sure. But have you ever been, like, has there ever been a time where you're working with an artist, bro? You just wanna deck them in his shit? You know what I'm saying? Like he just not working with it. Like, um, not nah, to be honest. Nah, everything's love. Everything's promise you. Yeah, low key. Like I don't get in rooms with people I don't vibe with. Like, and I've left rooms where I don't vibe at. You feel me? Because it's just like I know I'm not in the right place. Not like in a malicious way towards them, but it's just like when I'm catching the vibe, or the sound they're making for their project is not the sound I'm making right now. So it's just like we're not, you know, we're not mixing together. But ain't nothing awesome, like like I said, malicious. But if I'm in a studio with an artist, 9.9 .9 times out of 10 is because I wanted to be in the studio. I either asked them or I told them I'm copying the session for love. You know, uh, it's one of those things where like, you wonder, like, what goes on behind, you know, you see when the music's put out, we're like, what happens behind doors, bro? Like, what's going on? And it's cool that you're making the vlogs now. Yeah. You get like a glimpse in that life of yours. And you know, and and when it when it happens, when you do take off and you get to that next milestone in your career, you'll have something to look back at. You know, for when, sure, yeah. When I was, you know, I, I don't make music, but I'm a student of the game. Like I like to watch, and I'm like, I don't know, maybe we had a, like having previous conversations. I'm always watching these artists. You know, it's, it's kind of part of my job as well. Not for sure, yeah. And uh, you know, and I, I love I love the game. I love music. I just suck at it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> it's not something I want to really dabble in. But I admire it from far. And so when I was coming up and I was just watching all the studio sessions from like Chief Key or like when Kanye's cooking some shit up, you know, or like, you know, or, or even watching older shit when I'm watching Nas or Biggie, you know, uh, you know, uh, we was talking about the whole Spotify thing. I was like, I just, I, I don't have a favorite genre, bro. Cause like, like my top five, like, artists were all from different genres. Like one was Ye, then you had Drake, then you had like some Spanish artists, you had country music. Yeah, not you know sure. what I'm saying? Like, I'm just all over the place. I like to like just pick and gather and just kind of listen to all sorts of shit just depending on the vibe. You know, some days nah, I just, yeah. some it really do matter how you're feeling. That's yeah. why music's so good because it has so many different emotions into it. Whatever you're feeling, you, you gonna find a song that's gonna make you feel like either like the same way, better, worse. So that's why I fuck with music because if I'm feeling down, I put some, some shit gonna like, get me up, like future, <laughs> I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna get motivated. Like, oh yeah, I'm trying to get my bag. Like, if I play some of that shit, I'm gonna wanna be like, you know, sad or in bed, not really trying to do too much. But it's Easter on, you know? That's how it is. Yes, sir. Well, I mean, we talked a little better about everything. Um, and I wish we got more time to keep on going and talk about bloody. Just keep on talking. Nah, uh, <laughs> uh, we talked about uh, your, 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 your up and coming tape. You wanna let them know? Um, I'm sure by the time this episode's out, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, this is a job for well, Christmas type shit, right? Yeah. So the twenty second, this is probably dropping on the twenty third. I didn't want to name, I didn't want to date just in case you know, but yeah, my tape is definitely on the twenty second though for sure. Make sure you guys tap into that if you haven't already. 
just chop last night. Um, all with some dope ass Orlando artists. You know, thank you to all those artists that were on that tape, to everyone that tapped in, to you guys for letting me you know promote basically and be a part of the show and be able to drop that as well. You know, always showing love, but definitely shout out to Orlando. You know, yeah, I had my back and y'all, y'all give me the fuel to chase this dream for real because I got y'all behind me. Not even behind me, besides me. So it's those that I love for real. So yeah, shout out to y'all, shout out to me. Shout out to Trendsetters and shout out to Senko, you know, like we out here doing it. All right, well, you heard it here first, baby. So, uh, where can they find you at? Um, Instagram is Azrael underscore prod. You can look me up on Apple Music and check that too, though, under Azrael Beats with a Z. Um, Twitter, Azrael prod as well. We'll have some links though, we'll have some links. Yeah, we put links yeah. down. That's just too much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I got a few little uh, outlets and shit. Yeah, but yeah, thank you for coming, bro. For sure, bro. Thanks for having me, man. Uh, Always. Yeah, guys, thank you for watching. If you like the show, uh, please comment, like, and subscribe, and uh, catch y'all later. Sure.